What is Bruce Bloitation? The year was 1973. Enter the Dragon was about to create the first internationally famous Asian film superstar. Disaster struck. Bruce Lee found dead at age 33. To honor his memory, a dozen producers, distributors, production companies made hundreds of films where they pretended to star Bruce Lee. You had Bruce Lai, you had Bruce Lap, you had Dragon Lee, you had Bruce K.L. Lee. You had Bronson Lee, <laughs> you had Bruce Lung. Bronson Lee is worth pausing on because he was a combination of Bruce Lee and Charles Bronson. <laughs> the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, somehow he was better than both of them combined. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about our five favorite Bruce Bloitation films. And it's actually harder than you would think. Mm -hmm to narrow it down because you really do have dozens of movies to choose from. And like we consider, do we want to hit every like important part of Bruce Bloitation? Do we have a Dragon Lee film in there? Are we leaving some people out? Do we have enough Bolo Young pictures? One of the most memorable villains in Enter the Dragon who made a career playing in Bruce Bloitation territory. Well, I think we have to follow our hearts. Yeah, well, I agree. I, I would like to start though with one of the most, I would say, uh, historically, artistically significant Bruce Bloitation films. One that, in some way, I think encapsulates the whole genre. And it is 1976's Bruce Lee, The Man, The Myth. Starring the man, the myth himself, Bruce, Bruce Lai. Lai. Bruce Lai being, no doubt, the best Bruce Bloitation star. Not in the sense that he imitated Bruce Lee the best, but that he was just the most charismatic, skilled, and dedicated performer. I may dispute that a little bit because Bruce Lee really threw himself into it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think Bruce Lee would win the shameless competition. But Bruce Lee is the one that you respect the most. Yeah. Bruce Lee was, in fact, the star of one of the very first Bruce Bloitation films, Bruce Lee, A Dragon Story, which was a lurid biopic about Bruce Lee's affair with Betty Ting Pei. But by the time he got to Bruce Lee, The Man, The Myth in 1976, the films had gotten better. The production values had gotten higher. And I think this was sort of the zenith of the genre, production values wise. Directed by Eun Sin Young, the guy who would go on to discover Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, The Man, The Myth is probably the slickest of all Bruce Bloitation films. It's shot on three continents, <gasps> Asia, North America, and Europe. So we get to follow Bruce Lai as Bruce Le as he goes from Hong Kong to Seattle to San Francisco to Los Angeles, all the way to Rome to make Way of the Dragon, and then back to Hong Kong. And so you get shots like uh, Bruce Lai dressed as Cato, awkwardly hanging outside a studio because they, they're not allowed to go in and film. <laughs> yeah, across the street, zoomed in. There's another scene in San Francisco when Bruce Lai is like riding the trolley, and as the trolley goes by, like all the people on the trolley like start waving to the camera because they, <laughs> they like stealing shots. You know, this, this movie is like a, a child's perspective on what Bruce Lee's life was like. I mean, Bruce Lee's is always films made from a child's perspective, but this is one that is like, the most respectable, in the sense that it's not exploiting his life like the best of Bruce Bloitation does. Well, most of the Bruce Lee biopics, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of them in the 70s, most of them focused on the more lurid aspects of his life, speculating on drug use. Uh, there was a film called Bruce Lee and I, which actually starred Bruce Lee's mistress, Betty Ting Pei, as herself. And that was a Shaw Brothers production. <laughs> Listen, not, yeah, it was pretty high end. <laughs> they were in dire financial straits at that time. But Bruce Lee, the man, the myth, you know, not only is it is it kind of respectable and polished, but it, it has, uh, the, the thesis of the movie is that Bruce was so great, he was such a, such a cool guy and so good at kung fu that he was constantly being challenged all over the world. Yeah. And if you, by the way, also, if you see it in the American release print, he's dubbed by a guy who does sound like Charles Bronson. <laughs> Care to join us, boys? Maybe he was dubbed by Bronson Lee himself. So you get to see Bruce kick ass after ass after ass, <laughs> uh, constantly being challenged, but it, it's at its best in at the very end when after Bruce Lee dies, this is the, the one part where the movie sort of loses its uh, taste. Yes. The, the narrator speculates that, okay, well, while this is the popular understanding of how he died, here are some other popular theories too. <laughs> yeah, so, triads. Yeah, he may, be, may have been killed by the triads. He may have gone into hiding until 1983. <laughs> Why until 1983? 10-year anniversary of his death. Then he so comes mark, popping out of the grave. Mark your calendars. <laughs> 1983, Bruce may be coming back according to this film. Him and Andy Kaufman, hand in hand. <laughs> So that's the slickest one. From there, I think we should go to number four. The trashiest one. The clones of Bruce Lee. Plot is... Uh, the plot? 
So, okay, so the first thing I want to say about this movie is that it features a scientist who's played by John Ben. John Ben was the big mob boss in Way of the Dragon. Audiences were just hungry. <laughs> I guess for the mob boss of Way of the Dragon. For some legitimacy, yeah. you know, to, to show that yeah, yeah, this movie really has a real connection to Bruce Lee. It's got that old guy. And wouldn't it be like an Uncanny Valley where it's like, oh, well, this is definitely not Bruce Lee because this guy was with Bruce Lee. <laughs> so Clones of Bruce Lee opens on the day that Bruce Lee dies, and he's being uh, taken to the hospital. He's DOA. What a shame. But fortunately, there are some scientists who, who are going to clone him, and they, they create Bruce Lee 1, Bruce Lee 2, and Bruce Lee 3. Played by Dragon Lee, Bruce La, and a third guy, Bruce Lay. Who never appeared again. L-A-I. And there's also a fourth guy who's not a clone, but his name is Bruce Ty. Yeah. We see him later. So this is really the Mount Rushmore. Of Bruce, Li Bruce Loitation pictures. Um, and so, you know, they all get employed in the Hong Kong film industry, but there's a, pl a plot that's been hatched to kill one of them on camera. This this plot actually recurs a couple times in the exploitation <laughs> yeah, film. It's like definitely the well that all the Bruce exploitation ears go to. So this is a pretty wacky movie. It's got uh, Shaolin Bronze Man in it. Mm -hmm. It's got, you know, kooky headgear stuff on it. Bolo Young is in it as Bo well. Bolo Young is in it. Uh, unauthorized use of the Rocky theme. There's a scene where the Bruce's are taken on a tour by mm -hmm. Bruce Ty, and they happen to be on a beach, and then there are a bunch of uh, naked women frolicking on the beach and they just stopped to <laughs> stop to watch them now clones of bruce lee was produced by a man who will appear again on this list and it's producer dick randall and dick randall was i guess the way to describe him was like a trash meister yeah, in the uk i guess so i think the movie that he's best known for is he produced pieces mm -hmm. which is a slasher film pieces of course had the famous tagline you don't have to go to texas for a chainsaw massacre <laughs> and it's a film that also features bruce lee from clones of bruce lee because he appears very briefly to get into a martial arts duel with a character just out of random and then he goes something i eat <laughs> bad chop suey so long <laughs> pretty bad but uh, Dick Randall was was a great patron and supporter of Bruce Lee, and you know Bruce Lee, uh, he was I think the true artist of the Bruce Lee clones <laughs> because he became a filmmaker. He directed films such as Ninja Over the Great Wall. He's currently still directing films in mainland China now, mm -hmm. propaganda films. Yeah, propaganda. Yeah. I hope they're all Bruce Loitation films. One of them's called Blood Warrior, I think, and he still goes by the name Bruce Lee. Which I is love that. Hilarious. <laughs> I love it. And Dick Randall produced, would it be considered a Bruce Loitation film? I guess he does Bruce Lee kind of stuff. I, I think so. I think if Bruce Lee is in it, just Bruce Lee is like just a walking, talking Bruce Loitation, like like just embodiment. He just does everything that Bruce Lee does. He, he wears the game of death thing. He likes to go like, wah, wah, yeah, which yeah. is something that like Bruce Lee kind of eased off further on into his career. Bruce Lai, the producers kept promising him, oh, don't worry, don't worry. The next one will credit you under your real name, Ho Chung Dao. Yeah. But it never happened. Nope. But Bruce, Bruce Lai still goes by Bruce Lai. He <laughs> I loves love it. That. Yeah. And so Challenge of the Tiger, number three on our list, is notable for being more of a kind of Euro spy-ish kind of exploitation film. Well, it has an unbeatable buddy duo <laughs> Bruce La and your favorite actor Richard Harrison love Richard Harrison R Richard Harrison who was sort of yeah like like kind of an also ran mm -hmm. uh, kind of a Rick Dalton type really yeah, where he made a few films in Hollywood and then ended up in Italy doing a bunch of like Peblum so he played like Hercules and other strong shirtless men like that I know he claims to have turned down the man with no name Richard Harrison is most famously known as shooting one or two weeks on a Godfrey Ho film and then appearing in a thousand ninja pictures from then on. Yeah, and, and that pretty much single-handedly, I guess, killed uh, his career. Killed him. He's in Ninja Terminator, Ninja uh, Ninja the Protector. Yeah. He's in over 50 movies with the word ninja in the title. If you've seen the clip of a man with a Garfield phone, that is Richard Harrison. I have to reform the ninja empire. That is why I took away it. That is why I took away it. The Golden Ninja Warrior. The Golden Ninja Warrior. You've got three days in which to return the Golden Ninja Warrior. Right? Or else you die. What, 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 what is that? Or else you die. Go, go, go to hell. Bye, 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 b
Bruce Latt plays, you know, uh, a good, a big kung fu expert, and Richard Harrison plays a guy who lives in a mansion who likes to fuck. And he loves to play naked tennis. He's surrounded by topless women who yep. play tennis in slow motion. It's that kind of movie. Yeah, it is. He fucks all the way through the movie, and he looks drunk. Yes. He looks like he's not having a good time. But he and Bruce... They're such good pals. They're always like yeah. high-fiving each other and, you know. Bruce Lee is doing all the Bruce stick in it. But it's a movie that's, like, just packed with stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a movie where Bruce Lee fights a bull. Yes. And he's doing, like, motorcycle chases. And, okay, there's a, a really good part where um, they're at the races. Mm -hmm. And uh, he meets, I think, Jack Klugman and Sylvia Christel. I think it's them. I think those are the ones. Sylvia Christel who played Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And he just goes up to them and like shakes their hands and says hi. And their names ended up on the poster, like <laughs> yeah, bow finger right. style. <laughs> <laughs> and Challenge of the Tiger is also notable because it was remastered and re-released by Mondo Macabro in a Dick Randall double feature with the other famous picture, For Your Height Only. For Your Height Only, which stars the two-foot-tall superstar Wang Wang. Yeah, that's right. And it's a James Bond character. Why didn't Wang Wang and Bruce Lee ever get together in a Dick Randall production? <laughs> they should have. Yep. Oh, speaking of the best unmade Bruce Lee films, how can we not talk about... Ilsa and the Devil's Triangle. Ilsa meets Bruce Lee in, yeah, the, Devil's in, in the Devil's Triangle. And that was supposed to star Diane Thorne mm. of Ilsa Shewell from the of the SS and uh, Bruce Lai. And I guess it just never got made, but they announced it. They had concept art for it and everything. And it's, it leaked to the internet, and I think some fake reviews popped up that made people believe that it was out there. Yeah. yeah. But thankfully, um, great detectives, Will Sloan, um, asked her, Diana Thorne, oh, did at I? a convention, was if the me? movie ever Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or was it me? That. Who knows? We we're interchangeable. It's like Persona at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Both our faces just melding together. So, number two, we're in Bruce Lai territory now. And we got to talk about Soul Brothers of Kung Fu. I mean, I, I, I weep just thinking about it. It's such a tragic <laughs> story. But Bruce Lai plays uh, an illegal immigrant into Hong Kong. He The film opens with him on a raft, you know, making his way into Hong Kong, and he becomes a dishwasher. But uh, he, he fights like Lee, and mm. he becomes a, a big star. But unfortunately, he gets enmeshed in the triads, and the triads kill his girlfriend. Um, and so he goes on a... A deadly journey of revenge. But at least he has his good friend, Carl Scott, <laughs> to come along with him, who could not be hurt at any point during the film, right? <laughs> Carl Scott's presence is why the movie got the English title, Soul Brothers of Kung Fu. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and this is a film, out of all the Bruce Plotation ones, that feels the most kind of cinema verite, where it's shot on the streets of Hong Kong mm. by a cameraman who's doesn't have permission. It's very obvious. Yeah, it has a neorealist quality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the bicycle scenes. It, it feels it feels sweaty and raw. Yeah. Um, and also, it has really good fight scenes. Much, it does. Much bloodier mm. than normal. And it's it, a it, real tragedy. It is. It is tragic because at the end, well, there are there are a couple of different endings. Mm -hmm. uh, the the ending that I like is him cradling Carl <laughs> Scott in his arms. Yeah. Uh, having just died, but there's also a more triumphant ending that ends with him and the Rocky music, <laughs> unauthorized. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, uh, if I had to recommend like a non goofball movie, Soul Brothers of Kung Fu is a good one to put people's way. One that feels kind of like a real movie. Yeah, it even though it's um, very ramshackle in its construction. It's also directed by probably my favorite Bruce Plotation director, Lee So Nam. Oh yeah, he's so good. And what can you say about Lee So Nam? Uh, he did everything in the world. He did Taiwanese fantasy pictures. He did Inspector Wear Skirts ripoff, which are like police, women, kung fu pictures. He was like a go-to guy who just cranked them out. Kung Fu Wonder Child is a great film that he made. He also made, um, is it Exit the Dragon, End of the Tiger? That's right, which is another great Bruce Lai film. It's not on our top ten list, but I mm. think it deserves mentioning because it's another of the quintessential Bruce Lai It'd films. be on our top ten. It's not on our top five. Bruce Lai plays Tiger, a student of Bruce Lee, and he Bruce Lai plays both roles. Mm -hmm. As the movie begins... Bruce Lee is saying, you know, if something happens to me, uh, find out what. And then, uh-oh, Bruce dies. Tiger doesn't believe it. How can this be? So he goes investigating, and of course it's the triads. Yeah, it's always the triads. It's always the triads. <laughs> While we're talking uh, just in general, before we get to our number one, mm. I I'd like to address just a few other Bruce Bruceploitation movies. There is uh, The Dragon Lives Again, which if you're watching our Important Cinema Club Bargain Bin Classics Blu-ray, you'll be well acquainted with. That's the film starring Bruce Lung, where Bruce Lee goes to hell, and actually not hell, the underworld, 
fact fact checking myself. <laughs> yep. Um, and it doesn't sound as fun. And he fights James Bond, the Godfather, the mm-hmm. Exorcist, Dracula, Zatoichi, and he's uh, friends with Popeye the Sailor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Kane from Kung Fu. And Kane from Kung Fu. There's also uh, a favorite film of mine, Bruce Lee: The Man and the Legend, which was the movie that Golden Harvest, Bruce Lee Studio rushed into theaters a month after his death and which consists mostly of Bruce Lee funeral footage. And that's one of your favorites? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's sort of fascinating that it exists. Mm-hmm. A lot of funeral footage. You see Bruce in his casket. Do you think they kicked it off and like the other producers were like, well, I guess we can do this if they, the company that Bruce Lee worked for did this exploitative thing? Maybe. There's another important subgenre in Bruce Bruceploitation. When Bruce Lee died, he was in the midst of filming Game of Death and photos had been released of him in that iconic yellow tracksuit going up a pagoda and fighting a new martial arts master at each level. But the film was incomplete and there were no plans in releasing it. So there was a whole slew of Bruce Bruceploitation movies that were uh, sort of posing as Game of Death completed. And they would be advertised in such a way as to as to trick you into thinking <laughs> yeah. that that's what they were. So Bruce Lai was in a movie called Goodbye Bruce Lee, His Last Game of Death. Bruce Le was in Enter the Game of Death. There was another film called True Game of Death, which is <laughs> as, that film is as bottom of the barrel as you can get. Yeah. It is so bad. That's because it's the true one. Yeah. <laughs> Reality is not as much fun as you hope it will be. And we have to mention the other exploitation, very small subgenre, Jacksploitation. Well, Jackie Chan, of course, was the uh, action star that sort of uh, succeeded Bruce mm-hmm. Lee in the popular imagination. And in fact, there were a few Bruce Bruceploitation, Jackie Chan hybrid films. <laughs> there was Jackie and Bruce to the Rescue, yeah. which featured Jackie Chang and uh, <laughs> the guy who was Bruce Lee's body double in Game of Death. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which... Tower of Death, also known as Game of Death 2. The superior uh, of Death film. Yes. Uh, th- uh, that's a really great movie. Directed yes. by Eng Si Yoon. Mm-hmm. Choreography by Yoon Woo Ping. There's another film called The Real Bruce Lee, where they basically took a bunch of childhood footage mm-hmm. that Bruce Lee was in, and they intercut it with like a Bruce Lee highlight reel and a 60-minute Dragon Lee film. But what was great about The Real Bruce Lee was th- that it was publicized as a new Bruce Lee film found in the Chinese archives, and it's just like Bruce Bruce Lee as a kid. Bruce Lee the Invincible, where Bruce Lee fights gorillas. Uh, there's Dynamo, yeah. uh, which is one of the better Bruce Lee films. I mean, we could be talking about Bruce Lee films forever. Uh, there, there's also Dragon Sack, who is a turn of the millennium Bruce Lee clone. He's in <laughs> Big Boss Untouchable. Yeah. Bruce Bruceploitation continued into the new millennium. But we want to talk about the best, in our opinion, Bruce Bruceploitation film, and that's the Chinese stuntman, starring, directed, choreographed by Bruce Lee. Imagine that you're Bruce Lai. Imagine that you've been promised for almost a decade mm-hmm. that, that the next one you'll be able to escape from Bruce's shadow. But you never do. Well, this is your, this is your chance to show what the Hong Kong film industry is. It's, it's an evil place that chews people up and spits them out, that doesn't care about humans, that mm-hmm. only cares about business. In this film, Bruce Lai plays a Chinese stuntman working on the set of a film featuring a new superstar sort of a Jackie Chan-like figure. Mm -hmm. And he uncovers a plot by the producers to kill that superstar on camera and collect money. So he jumps into action, fighting some of Bruce Lee's real students. Including in a a, a final brawl that's probably the best fight scene in a Bruce Plantation film, Mm. Danny Inosanto. Yeah, this film is genuinely great. You don't have to put it between (laughs) parentheses or anything like that. It's not even like weird, so it's fun. It's just brutal, has great fights, is well-paced and well-directed. It's Bruce Lies the player. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I hope that we introduce you to some new Bruce Ploitation films, or we open the door to the madness that is Bruce Ploitation. Oh, my God.